Welcome back everyone, it's uh, morning in the shed which means it's uh, coffee time. Black as the ace of spades, just the way it ought to be. So, this morning I thought we'd take a little bit of an adventure into talking about torches and how they work on different machines. So we'll uh, probably have a few little cuts and splices and stuff in this video, but yeah, we'll probably get through it without too much drama. So. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, move us over to the machine here and talk about a few of the uh, fixtures that are on the front. So, this particular unit or machine, the Tetrix here, is not too dissimilar to a lot of other machines out there um, in that it's got a uh, 35 to 50 square mil dints connection, which is like a push and quarter turn arrangement. And it has this for both the uh, positive port, which on the TIG function is your earth clamp, and the TIG torch, which in this case is the negative output. Um, the other things you need to get a torch working um, is obviously gas to the torch head, um, which will run either through the gas hose, um, which is a primary gas hose, or through a one-piece hose, and we'll talk about that later. The other thing you might want if your torch has the functionality is some sort of um, interface for uh, switching of various outputs on buttons on torches. So whether that's a simple uh, trigger assembly for the purposes of starting and stopping the arc, or whether it's a more involved situation like uh, amperage up, amperage down, uh, rotary dials or potentiometers for um, you know, putting current up and down on the fly. Um, so these are pretty standard the gas fittings are usually pretty standard um, this can change quite a bit between machines um, that's a that's an 8 pin connection uh, one that EWM uses I think it's called the Burndy um, connection 8 pin um, other machines have various aviation style plugs and there's a heap out there um, realistically they're just standard, they're electrical connections. When you think about them in that way, how you interface the plug to it is sort of a secondary consideration. Um, you know, for the purposes of adapting different torches to different machines, you could probably go quite wild in making a, um, you know, a, a Franken, Franken torch or an adapter plug or something like that, which is going to do what you need it to do. But um, I guess for, you know, pre-packaged and sold machines, it needs to be a nice neat package. Customers wouldn't want to buy a machine, <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to buy a machine if it had, uh, you know, like a plug that had been hacked together with bloody spade terminals and all sorts of rubbish hanging off it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that is what it is. Um, you know, sometimes you can make very weird things work with machines when you just remember that you need um, an earth clamp, you need power to the torch, you need gas to the torch, and some way to control the features on that torch. You have that in mind, anything's possible. So that'll bring us to the next thing. So uh, the dints connection. This is a dints plug. So this here is a. Uh, you can see it there. She's a got a little bit of a lug on it. Um, the sizing of that. Yeah, it's about 12, 12 and a bit millimeters. I lie. Yeah, twelve point nine one. Hey, that's not too bad for eyeballing it. I wasn't as wasn't as bad as I thought I was. So yeah, twelve point nine one millimeters. Um, and this arrangement just goes in. It's keyed. Twist until it's tight and it doesn't go anywhere. And that just provides power to the torch. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, this machine here has a quarter NPT thread, quarter inch. Um, that's a gas fitting. It's got a, uh, how do you explain it? It's got like a little uh, concave section, a ceiling face in there, and the thread just pulls it all together to make it gas tight. 
Um, so that's what the inside of that one looks like. I've made this little adapter arrangement, uh, which goes from a quarter gas fitting NPT uh, to a 5 8 fitting, 5 8 18 threads per inch, which is pretty much the standard for a lot of gas stuff these days. That's what a 5 8 gas fitting looks like. That's the other side. So what I do, quarter NPT to the machine, 5 8 gas in a female, put a joiner in. This is the same outlet which is on most Australian regulators. It's also the same outlet that's on um, oxyacetylene hoses, um, the right hand thread being on the oxygen fittings. So you can get these things anywhere. They're dime a dozen, they're uh, cheap and cheerful, and you know if you know what you're dealing with, then you can adapt it however you want. So from there, I've got a 5 8 fitting which then goes back to a, a gas hose, which goes to the regulator on the, on the bottle. Um, Right, yeah. So that would get our power to the torch. That gets our gas sorted, and then the the uh, machine connection. That's a Burndy plug, like I said. Might uh, get the uh, camera set up over here again. Hopefully, we get a bit of focus going on. And that's the uh, that's the Burndy plug. So. This is on the standard EWM torch, and this is, you know, just a engineered package that just works with the machine. It's designed to work with this specific machine, and it does exactly what we want it to do. So, for that purposes, there's no dramas there. So, what I'll do is I'll get all this cleared up, and we'll come back for another talk about the individual torches you can use and how you can get them to work with your machine. Stay tuned. Right, so back on the bench we've got the standard EWM torch here, which is the, uh, what do you call it, the TIG 300 GD. So we spoke about this in one of the first videos I did on this machine. It's a uh, 26 style torch, it's a big bertha, it does, will handle a heap of power, it's a good solid torch. Um, yeah, I love this torch. It's got uh, two buttons, a primary current button. You can uh, program these buttons to do various things within the machine. Um, the limitation I find it's a fixed neck. So, uh, yeah, has its uh, benefits, but, yeah, I'm all about being a little bit more comfortable when I weld, and sometimes a fixed torch, fixed neck torch, doesn't get you where you want, want to be. Um, so, yeah, uh, you can get flexible necks for this, I just haven't got around to it. I've been, you know, had a 17 series CK torch with a super flex cable and a flex neck and that did everything I needed it to do. Um, so I haven't really gone to the steps of pimping this one out just yet. Um, so yeah, this torch is what they call a uh, two-piece torch um, as far as like the connections go. So looking at the, the connections, we've got the red, which is the dense connection for the power. So that's the power cable. The connection plug, the Burndy plug, which has three pins, which are pinned out, out of the eight that are available. So these three pins, uh, if I were to guess, and you can pull up the EWM, has the wiring diagrams available if you wanted to look at it, but realistically you've probably got uh, a earth and then you've got one for each, one one pin for each of these buttons so the machine will know what's going on based on those three pins um, then you've got a, a gas line which once again is that same uh, quarter NPT fitting which is just a little uh, braided um, hose so when I said two piece what that means is this is a dedicated power plug a dedicated power connection and this is a dedicated gas connection. Gas goes through this only, power goes through this only and the electrical connections go to these buttons and they're just like a whole separate consideration. Um, when you pull the torch apart, undoing here, pulling back, you can see what's going on. Gas. Signal for the um, button. Power. When you pull this back, you get access to the 
remaining bits and pieces in here. Bit hard to do this on camera. Don't have a great. Here we go. So there we've got the uh, button assemblies under here. This can be a bit of a nightmare to get out. Alright, so we're out. Um, these two buttons under the rubber cover is just a simple tactile switch, momentary switch, which are uh, they're just like little surface mount parts. Um, realistically, if you were really good with a soldering iron and knew your electronics, you could probably build one of these up in no time. Uh, I'm sure there might be other configurations you could use. But anyway, that's probably some pretty hardcore torch hacking. Um, yeah, so buttons, power comes into a threaded connection up here, uh, which goes to the torch neck, and this, uh, this section here is where the gas interfaces. So you can see this uh, actual torch end is, it's a big copper hollow section which has been crimped. So that's how the uh, that's how the power goes back through to the torch neck. So we could actually put a spanner on here and here and disconnect this if we wanted, but and that's how you would change a, a flex neck. Or put a flex neck on or replace this torch neck if you did happen to have any issues with it. But realistically, that's uh, that's the guts of this torch, and um, we've got the got the uh, two piece component one two. Um, and we can compare that to what a CK torch looks like, which is a one-piece design. So I'll move all this out of the way and we'll get reset up to uh, see how that looks. Right, so here we are staring down the barrel of the CK torch. This is the uh, new one I got, the, uh, the Flex Lock. Which I'm still yet to give it a burn, but we'll be doing that this afternoon. Um, this is what we call a one-piece torch. So the one piece torch has a cable which is, you guessed it, one piece. Um, and what happens with that is it interfaces in this device which is called a safe lock connector. And that's what allows the, uh, the merging of the power and the gas uh, to go through this cable. So this one piece torch cable is, serves dual functions, it's hollow. Uh, you've got a nylon braid on the outside, you've got some sort of copper current you know, current carrying um, a conductor, <laughs> that's the word I was looking for, a conductor running through it somehow and then uh, through the middle it's hollow, it's a, like a silicon hose from what I understand and it's got uh, gas running through the middle. So um, how does it work in, uh, in, the, in the capacity of um, getting its interface with the machine? I'm glad you asked. Um, this is where the 5 8 gas fitting comes in. So these safe lock connectors come with this arrangement. What that means is you could essentially hook this up to your machine and you could hook that up into a regulator, an Australian regulator, which has got a 5 8 outlet, and essentially use this with a torch which has got a valve on it, or a number of other different ways. But for my purposes, what I do, 5 8 fitting, get my little adapter piece, Put it all together, that plugs into the machine, then we've got gas running through here. This gas goes into the safe lock connector, pull this apart, it's always a bit of a fight, there we go, this comes apart, and then from here we've got gas coming in, power comes in, and both inputs go into this output which goes to the torch itself. Um, 
This is a standard gas fitting, some of them, uh, what CK calls gas through dints. So this being the dints plug. Some torches allow for gas to flow through this connection as well, which would negate the need for this. Um, I think some of the Fronius machines use that. Um, to be honest, it's not that common. I don't really know too many machines that do it, but yeah, that's uh, one way that it could be managed from uh, getting those two inputs to your torch, gas and power. Um, looking at the torch itself, right here, um, when you've got your one piece cable and you pull this back, oops, try not to knock the camera over, you can see that we've got quite a simple uh, connection. We went through the types of threads that are on there in the previous video, but uh, what we've got here is just a one piece connection. Gas and power goes in, power comes out the tungsten, gas comes out the diffuser or the gas lens. So yeah, that's how that works. This torch, the astute amongst us, would notice it's got no buttons. Um, this will tie into the probably the next video we talk about with the foot pedal. So with this torch it could be run as a scratch start torch, um, which is the situation where this tungsten is always live. Um, for the purposes of uh, welding with these torches I run a foot pedal. So the foot pedal is, uh, allows current to be adjusted on the, on the fly. It also allows um, start and stop of the arc via the inbuilt um, essentially trigger latch tr trigger mechanism that's in there. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a rundown on the two different types of torch styles. One piece and two piece. Um, I'm sort of leaning towards one piece torches these days because I'm always, pretty much always using a pedal. Um, but a two piece torch with a good button set up on it is also equally valuable. So yeah, until next time, uh, enjoy your welding and we'll see you then.